Next, we have members' statements. The member from Meshkigawak, James Bay. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. I'm very happy to take the floor during the National Week of Francophone Immigration. It's important to speak about diversity in 21st century immigration. Therefore, the francophone, demonstrate, the francophone demonstrates much plurality outside of Quebec. 70% of francophone immigrants who arrive in Canada decide to settle in Ontario. Furthermore, approximately 60% of francophone immigrants arriving in Ontario belong to a racial minority and an ethnocultural minority. This diversity is a treasure which must be protected and encouraged. Nevertheless, the annual rate of francophone immigration is in decline, despite the fact that the former Liberal government adopted a target of 5%. Furthermore, it's difficult to understand how we can respect this francophone immigration promise when the government isn't hesitant to cut our services. And we will speak up. We need institutions, legal institutions, healthcare institutions that are up to this challenge. Mr. Speaker, the government of Ontario must adapt itself to these immigration targets and must act immediately. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Member Statements, the member for Niagara West. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's an honour to be able to stand in the Legislature today. I rise in the House to share how our government's investments in sport initiatives have directly benefited a, a para-sport family in my riding in Niagara West. Participation rates in sport and physical activity are significantly lower among individuals with disabilities, especially children, and only 26 per cent of children with physical disabilities are participating in sport. But Parasport provides the 1.85 million Ontarians living with a physical disability the opportunity to participate in competitive and recreational sport programs in an effort to challenge, inspire, and overcome limitations. It's why I want to recognize our local athlete, Owen Conkle, a resident of Niagara West who has received elite athletes classification by the International Federation for Intellectual Impairment Sport. It's very, very impressive. Coached by his mother, Jennifer, Owen is a great example of how aspiring athletes across the province can greatly benefit from Paris sport initiatives and programs. And I want to acknowledge, as Niagara prepares to host the 2021 Games, the generosity of the Minister of Infrastructure, Tourism and Culture and Sport, and how important it is to highlight these competitive sport and Paris sport initiatives, not only to lead to local economic investment, but how these initiatives also provide opportunities for athletes like Owen to compete on a national stage. We will continue to pledge our support of every aspiring athlete seeking an equal opportunity to compete with the ability with, for athletes like Owen Conkle. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, Member for Kiwetnong. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, today I spoke about the importance of the treaty relationship between the Crown and First Nations for uh, Treaties Recognition Week. Learning about, uh, more about treaties through events is just the beginning of recognition. Recognition comes from action, and that action starts here. The first real step is the passing of my private member's bill on the Im implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People in Ontario. <clears throat> but this is just one piece, Mr. Mr. Speaker. The reality on the ground is that our people continue to live in the far, that live in the far north without uh, proper infrastructure, such as clean drinking water, which is a basic human right. This is a crisis that the provincial and the federal government have no will to change. <clears throat> uh, this lack of will is shown in the issue of the Robinson uh, annuities case. Leaders from, uh, the, that, from the communities that signed the Robinson, Robinson Treaty have taken the government to court to get the enforcement of the Crown promises in their treaty. The Robinson-Huron Treaty stated that the signatories would receive an increase in treaty annuities based on the economic value of the land. We know that Ontario is a very, very rich in natural resources. The fact that it has been stated over and over in this chamber, as a as an honor uh, as an honourable uh, treaty partner, 
Ontario should be working with our communities, not forcing them into a litigation to share the wealth of this province. Miigwech. Member statements. The member for Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, to colleagues in the legislature today, we won't be here on Remembrance Day. So, in my time allotted to member statements, I would like to offer a personal reflection. My father served in the Second World War and was a proud member of the Princess Patricia Led Infantry. They suffered many, many deaths and casualties in their mission to liberate Holland and Belgium. My riding of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington is also home to the vaunted. Hastings Prince Edward Regiment, which served with great distinction in the Italian campaign. And for many, many years, I had the honor to work with and support the men and women of Trenton Air Force Base, the air capital of Canada. And on a somber note, though, I was sadly privileged to attend many of the highly emotional repatriation ceremonies for those lost in Afghanistan. Their sacrifice has been honored by thousands of thoughtful Canadians who gathered on overpasses in the solemn journey on the Highway of Heroes originating at CFB Trenton. Words cannot express our sorrow, our gratitude, and our pride. So to all Canadians I say, and I know I speak collectively for all of us, we will remember them lest we forget, lest we forget. Member statements. The member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my riding, Toronto Danforth, strongly supports the expansion of transit. My constituents are fed up with being stuck in traffic. They want to be, be able to get onto streetcars, onto subway trains, and they can't far too often. Um, and for those reasons, they've supported the construction of the relief line, even though it would cause huge, huge disruption in my riding. They support the expansion of GO transit service because they know people have to get from the suburbs to downtown coming through my riding. They have engaged in long discussions with provincial officials about soundproofing and vibration mitigation. Notwithstanding the disruption, people have been supportive of that project. The recent decision to abandon the relief line, which will push back rapid transit by many years, has been very upsetting to people. The decision to take the Ontario line above ground south of Girard in my riding, so that this line, with heavy rail, with trains passing every 45 seconds within metres of people's bedroom windows, is not a reasonable approach. This is not good planning. This is hugely problematic. This needs to change. Parks need to be protected along those rail lines. People's homes need to be protected along those rail lines. The project needs to be revamped so that a subway train actually goes underground. I ask the Premier to rethink that design so that people's homes, parks, and neighbourhoods are protected. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Don Valley East. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to, uh, to talk about a former member here uh, in the Legislature that we all lost uh, tragically in, uh, in July of this year. A lot of people knew David Kaplan as a local school board trustee, as the MPP for Don Valley East, or as a cabinet minister and a government member in the former McGuinty government, where he served as the Minister of Infrastructure and the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Mr. Speaker, I knew David as a hardworking, caring person with deep ties to his community. David was a, a, a true politician in many forms. He remembered people's names. He loved to go from door to door to talk to people and really trying to figure out how to solve their problems. And regardless of anyone's political stripe, he always found common ground with anyone he was uh, with. David's, David's accomplishments during his time in government were many, but his, his, his number one gift, I believe, to this province was his work in rebuilding our roads, our hospitals, our courts, and other essential infrastructure. He followed his mother, Eleanor Kaplan's footsteps as a bold, collaborative, and hardworking cabinet minister. But above all, uh, David Kaplan was a dedicated father of two sons, Ben and Jacob, and, his, uh, and he was a husband to his loving wife, Lee. No matter how busy he was or what was going on in his life, he always made time to spend his family, and Mr. Speaker, he loved his community of Don Valley East. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Stormont. Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> There's always something exciting going on in my riding in Stormont Dundas and South Glengarry. And November is no different. This year, we're proud to host the Eastern Ontario Local Food Conference at the Nav Centre in Cornwall on November 13th and 14th, and this year's events promises to be the best yet. With three regional food tours, a delicious local food tasting reception, and a full day conference programming to inspire and motivate you, this is the event not to be missed. This year's theme is Growing Communities Together, and the conference will explore exciting local food initiatives in the region. The program features prominent entrepreneurs, municipalities and organizations, all creating an opportunity for local food. The Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs is organizing the conference in partnership with the City of Cornwall and the United Counties of Stormont, Dundas and Glengarry. Great ministry. The Eastern Ontario food, Local Food Conference is a must-attend must event for anyone who shares our mission to grow Ontario's agri-food sector and support rural communities, said Ernie Hardiman, Ontario's Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. The conference offers a unique opportunity to explore our economic opportunities and community connections. Warden Jamie McDonald and Mayor Bernadette Clement are looking forward to welcoming visitors to the area. East Ontario has a thriving and innovative agri-food sector, and having a chance to share our ideas and successes with other, others will benefit the whole region. So I hope to see you all there. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Temiskaming, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to make this House aware that insurance companies in Ontario are not recognizing the, minim the minimum entry-level training program that became law in 2017. And I'll tell you how that impacts businesses and jobs in this province. GAPL Storage, in my riding, Janice and Peter LaRock, have a container business. They deliver containers, rent them. Their son, Earl, is joining the business and has worked in the business for years. Now he wants, he got his AZ license. He took the course, 200 hours. They went to get insurance, and he can only get facility insurance. They can't pay it, and basically that's going to shut this business down. And that's happening across farms, that's happening across small businesses, across this province. I brought this issue forward to the former Minister of Finance. I didn't get the response I was looking for. Uh, I have brought this issue to the current Minister of Finance, and he is still looking at it. I am now bringing this issue to the House, to the Premier. Small businesses, farms, JPL storage. If Earl has to go work for a big trucking company for three years, the business is done. This law is on the books. This is a good regulation, a regulation that should be enforced, and I'm asking for the House's support to actually save JPL storage and save these companies that are going to be put out of business because they aren't, they aren't protected by our regulations. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This past Thanksgiving was a graceful one. It gave us time to reflect and be thankful for the blessings we have and how fortunate we are. In our province today, the sad reality is that there are still people who do not have the same necessities and privileges as we do. This year, my team and I took time to volunteer at the Salvation Army shelter in my riding of Mississauga, East Cooksville. The Salvation Army operates around 50 emergency shelters across Canada and provides thousands of emergency transitional and supportive housing beds each night for men, women, youth, and families at risk. Mr. Speaker, the Salvation Army allows people to feel respected, hopeful, and dignified at a time when they need it most. I'm amazed and humbled by the great work and services the Salvation Army, their staff, and volunteers provide every day in Mississauga East Cooksville and across Ontario. Our government and I will work tirelessly to help ensure that all Ontarians have the opportunity to grow and prosper. As the winter holiday season approaches, let us all remember to take some time out to help our neighbours in need and follow the great example of the Salvation Army. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. 
Member statements. The member from Mississauga Centre. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On November 11th, we will honour our heroes who have sacrificed so much so we can live in peace. As a Polish Canadian, November 11th carries a dual significance. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, following 123 years of partitions and occupation and being wiped out from the map of Europe, Poland became a self-governing nation once again. Despite the many decades of struggle, Poles managed to win back their freedom and rightful sovereignty, owed largely to their patriotism and heroism. Polish Independence Day is the most important national holiday in Poland. It celebrates the strength, bravery, and resilience of the men and women who fought for centuries to maintain their freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. Here in Ontario, we are proud of the contributions Polish Canadians have made to our province since first settling here 155 years ago. I am also proud of our very own mini Polish Canadian caucus here on the government side, with Minister Jurek, Minister Jakabeski, Minister Surma, and myself. We take every opportunity to showcase our rich heritage and history, which sometimes includes singing the Polish anthem to your Uber driver. Right, Minister Jakabeski? <laughs> Our Premier values the work ethic and multifaceted contributions Poles have made to, Inter to Ontario. He also has a self-inflicted pierogies addiction. Mm -hmm. But in all seriousness, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of all my caucus colleagues, I would like to wish all Polish Canadians living in Ontario happy Polish Independence Day. Stolat. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon.